Hello, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch, and today we are going to check out Rider from uh, JetBrains Software, the makers of IntelliJ, uh, probably the most popular, yeah, I think I can get away with saying that, probably the most popular Java IDE out there. And what Project Rider, or at least used to be known as Project Rider, it's just Rider now, is basically is a cross-platform C-sharp IDE, and it supports pretty much all aspects of .NET. So basically, you can run .NET applications, ASP.NET applications, uh, .NET Core and Xamarin applications, and of note to you game developers, you can also obviously run your Unity projects with Unity uh, plugin actually being supported directly within Rider. Uh, which I'm going to keep calling Project Rider. I'm sorry, it's hard-coded into my head. So just so you know, I keep calling it that because that's what it used to be called when it was a beta. So why would you choose to use Project Rider? Well, essentially it came about, it is a merging or the offspring of two products. Uh, basically the IntelliJ IDE I mentioned earlier on, that uh, JavaScript IDE, it uses its, I'm uh, sorry, Java IDE, it uses its um, client on the front end. So basically, if you are familiar with other JetBrains products, such as IntelliJ, um, WebStorm, PyCharm, uh, Oh, there's a bunch of other ones. But basically, if you use any of their IDEs, they're all built around the same front end. And it's the front end that powers the IntelliJ IDE. And then what they've done is smacked in ReSharper. Now, ReSharper is a plugin for Visual Studio that's been around for ages. And it basically brings massively cool refactoring and linting tools to Visual Studio. And it has been one of the preeminent plugins for Visual Studio for a long time. So kind of it made sense to them to take their uh, visuals, um, sorry, their C sharp back end and their IDE front end and merge them together and create a product. And that's exactly what they have done with Rider. Now I do need to warn some of you right up front, there is a price tag attached to Rider. And in some cases it might be kind of a hard one. Uh, you know, I don't like getting into um, cost justifications because it all comes down to who you are and they've kind of taken that into account to a certain degree because you can see they've done their pricing based off of uh, who you are uh, so if you're a business organization or an organization it's this price if individual customers it's that price so I'm gonna assume that I'm dealing with mostly individuals so that's the pricing we're going to look at today and you'll see here it is an a annual basis so basically it's hundred and forty dollars a year US and that's pretty steep for a tool or it's completely cheap so again it's all really kind of a matter of perspective if you've got a budget it. Um, this guy is one of those things that will save you that many hours a year easily. So it easily pays for itself on that level. But if you've got no budget, then 140 is pretty outrageous. Now, one of those things that you should be aware of, however, is coming over to this guy over here. If you're a startup, you can get 50% off. If you're a teacher or a student, it's completely free. If you're in .NET user group, it's completely free. Education and training is completely free. Open source projects, it's completely free. And Microsoft MVPs are completely free. So there are a lot of opportunities to get Project Rider for free. So if that price tag is off-putting for you, be sure to check out this page first before you dismiss it. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at Project Rider. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because, frankly, an IDE is one of those things you have to kind of live with yourself for a few weeks to see if their way of doing things meshes nicely with your way of working. Now, the nice thing is there is a 30-day free trial available. I don't even think you have to give them any information. You basically just download it and run it for 30 days. So if what you see here looks interesting to you, do be sure to check it out. Uh, it is available for free. For free. Uh, so here it is in front of you. This is the interface. And like I said, if you've used WebStorm or you've used IntelliJ IDEA, this is exactly the same thing. The interface works basically the same thing. You can customize it. You can collapse down common menus uh, like so. You can pop them back out like so. You can hold down. Oh, get rid of it completely. Over here, you see we've got other ones hidden in. Those are all controlled via the um, view tool window. So all the various different options are available down here. You see you've got built-in NuGet integration. Uh, it's just becoming more and more popular in the .NET world. Um, it's kind of the, their equivalent of apt uh, git or um, you know maven etc um, so there's pretty solid release uh, support in there for the various different package managers via new git uh, one of the big things that's really been the shining grace for um, net uh, so jetbrains products in general is their plugin support and uh, this is no exception it, uh, project rider or rider sorry i'll stop saying that rider has pretty good plugin support and pretty good customization here's your standard customizations there's quite a bit to do i'm not going to get into those levels of detail but you see these are the plugins that have been installed out of the box but let's go take a look at the repository and then you can get a pretty good idea of what we are dealing with here so these are your plugins 
And sometimes, you know, they're pretty mild. Sometimes they're quite extensive. So for example, let's say um, framework integration. You can see we've got different frameworks uh, support being plugged in, AngularJS, um, Native Script, UI Kit, Yeoman, etc. So you've got pretty solid, pretty complete plugin support. And there's a lot of plugin sharing across their different tools. And one of the nice things is if you are used to using their tools, you can jump in here and they've got a common key set, a common user interface, etc. However, if you prefer, um, and it's something they ask you when you first start up, yeah, I think it's available right here. If you prefer to go with another IDE's approach, so if you're already used to Visual Studio, ReSharper, Eclipse, um, etc. If you're used to other, you know, in other development environment, you can actually switch to their key mappings if you want with this button right here. Uh, we've also got the ability, uh, come up here and go into appearance. Um, we have themes available. Uh, there, you can download more, but for example, I can switch out completely to a dark theme, which is on Vogue as of late. So we'll save that one out, and there you see here it is with the dark theme. Personally, I'd rather gouge my eyes out than use a dark theme like this, but this is what people love, and you obviously have full theming support. So that is in there out of the box as well. Um, you've got full support for, come up here and show you in the build environment. Uh, no, not build. Uh, da, 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 where did it go? Run, sorry. Um, there. So you've got uh, Android integration, so you see you have direct access over to your AVD and SDK managers, or you can open a, um, a device shell. And then you've got hooks into the, uh, if you have a, I'm on a Windows machine here, if I have a remote Xamarin agent machine running, I can do builds across to it. So there are direct supports in here for um, iOS and um, Android support via the Xamarin tool chain. Another thing that you probably find interesting or perhaps the most interesting thing about um, the way that um, Project Rider actually works is those refactoring tools that are being brought in from ReSharper. And here you can see some of them. Most of them are grayed out right now because I don't have anything actually selected, but you can use it to you know, uh, inject a field, extract a field, inline code, out, um, extract code, um, push members up in the hierarchy, down in the hierarchy, etc. So if you got to do a lot of refactoring of your code, pretty much all of the tools you'd like to see are here. Um, safe deletion, moving, changing signatures of functions. And we've got uh, the ability to convert from, say, a method to a property or a property to a method, etc. So it's one of the best ways of having full-blown C-sharp refactoring tools at your fingertips. And one thing you'll notice here is when we're straight up code editing, obviously you get what you expect. So you get your full code completion with suggestions going on. Uh, you can also integrate this directly into help. Now, one of the really cool things that Rider can actually do is they can disassemble code, which isn't really that uncommon in the world of C Sharp, but it can actually disassemble code. And if it's a known open source project, it can link it back to the actual source code. So when you want to do debugging into compiled code that, you know, if say Microsoft has the reference release of it available, it can actually grab that code and do a one-to-one -one comparison. So you're actually going through uh, native code when you're jumping through, not just, you know, um, a decompilation. So that's a pretty powerful feature there when you use it. Um, but what you'll see here, we've got various different errors and warnings going on down the left-hand side, quick code view. We can jump back and forth by using that, or we can up here and we can see the four different warnings are found. Now, I use the word warning pretty lightly, so it's got them highlighted right here. So you're seeing what's going on here is it's um, up vector does not match the name of real instance. So this is kind of linting that's built in. What it's doing is suggesting that you go ahead and name this guy following a certain naming convention. Now, if you don't want to, of course, you could turn that off. And with any of their suggestions, or if you have an error, etc., cetera, one of the, whenever the word is um, outlined or whatever, you can highlight it and do Alt-Enter. And this brings up a context menu. And therein, you have the different things. For example, it's saying here that you've got that inconsistent naming warning. And if I want, I can just go ahead and turn this off. Or I can say, don't show me this warning ever again or find more like this. And then there's also an explanation of why ReSharper is saying your code has a code smell. So it's finding code smells, code naming convention errors, and outright errors in your code, and then suggesting how you can go about and fix them. You're also seeing you're getting these various different options too. I can go ahead and refactor that code, 
And it was a lot like that menu we just saw, but it's gonna dynamically bring down the refactoring options available to us. Another really cool kind of feature here is you can see structure. So this is basically the members properties, et cetera, of the selected class that I'm currently in and a quick way to jump between them. And you know what, I'm only really kind of scratching the surface of what's going on here. We've also obviously got uh, database integration going on. Um, we've got unit testings in here that we haven't really touched on. Uh, deployment opportunities, V8 profiling, uh, F-sharp interactive consoles, SSH sessions. Uh, you can bring a console window directly up within this guy. We've also got some presentation options, one of which is really nice for someone such as myself, is I can go into presentation mode and basically, so if you're you know, projecting this across the internet, this is a pretty sweet way to do it. It just basically brings up all the fonts. I can also, I think it's uh, with control and scroll wheel, I can scroll up my text on the fly so you can easily see this. So if I'm doing code tutorials, if you go back and look at some of my previous tutorials, I actually use um, JetBrain products and I use presentation mode because it does make it a very small cluttered way of showing people when you're projecting or creating a YouTube video of what code looks like. Other options they've got going on here. And then let me just bring those guys back down. So go down here. I do not know why presentation mode is still stuck in. All right, here we go. Uh, view, and then we'll go into um, dif dif ah, distraction free mode. This gets rid of all of your panels and windows and leaves you just your code and your menus. Or we can go one step further and go full on full screen. So if you're one of those guys that wants just code, uh, just a straightforward editor, this is about as clean as you can get. And once again, you can zoom in and out like so. But the cool thing is, if we select something like this, we still have those alt enter context menus available to us. So if you're looking for a minimal code editing environment, they've got a really great opportunity and option here. Um, so that's what I'm gonna cover for Rider today. Uh, it's one of those things where, again, with something like an IDE, I can't really sell you one. I can just kind of show you it. Uh, I can recommend the 30-day trial, and that I fully do. You know, this is not for everybody. Uh, there are alternatives out, which I will cover in one second. But if you are looking for a cross-platform um, C-sharp IDE, this may be your best choice. Now, on that topic, uh, we have other options. So obviously, the daddy for all C-sharp IDEs is Visual Studio, which if you're a small development team making less than, I think, one million, possibly two million a year with a team of five or less, Visual Studio community is completely free. Otherwise, we actually start getting into a fair bit of pricing involved in that one. Uh, next up, you have Visual Studio Mac slash Xamarin Studio. I've never been a huge fan of it, to be honest. Uh, it sometimes was the path of least, uh, least resistance for doing uh, iOS or Android C Sharp work, but now um, that tooling has been built so heavily into other tools that that's kind of gone away a little bit. So do be aware, uh, Xamarin Studio has been rebranded as um, Visual Studio Mac, which is a very confusing and a very stupid naming convention, but hey, that's what you have. But for full-blown C-sharp IDEs, you basically have Rider, uh, Xamarin, and Visual Studio. So those are your big three choices, but you also have other options, and probably the next best option for C-sharp development, especially if you're using .NET Core, is Visual Studio Code, which is my go-to text editor. It's not the greatest for full-blown Visual Studio work, but for... Um, you know, like the, again, .NET Core or smaller projects, smaller editing, it is a great option and it's it's just getting better with time. So if Project Rider isn't your thing and you're still looking for another C-sharp alternative, be sure to check out one of those. But if Project Rider does look interesting to you, like I said, there's a 30-day free trial. I don't think you even need to give them an email. Uh, it's a pretty full package. It's a cool experience. Give them a couple of days. You know, you got to get used to the keyboard, uh, the way of working, you know, navigating your way around the user interface, setting it up, your projects, etc. But once you've got that all licked, you will find there is a reason why people keep paying to use JetBrains products. And they're great tools. And once again, a quick reminder that if you are a student, a teacher, an open source project worker, a .NET user group person etc there are completely free options so do check to see if you qualify for any of those all right that's it for now i hope you enjoyed that hope you found that useful if you did of course please do click like and uh, we cover all kinds of stuff uh, from game development to some you know slightly more general programming to um just about everything actually if that sounds interesting please do hit that subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you later all right goodbye